I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the Drake Buccaneer, and we're starting right now. Hello and welcome aboard your Drake Interplanetary Craft. Your systems are online. Welcome to A Star Citizen's Buyer's Guide. What's up, citizens? This is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Drake Buccaneer. And we'll compare those features amongst competing ships so you can make an informed buying decision. In this review, I'll cover a brief overview, take a look at the exterior and the interior, review stack comparisons, go over default weapons, discuss components and recommended upgrades, review the pros and cons, and finish up with my thoughts on the Buccaneer. If this is our first time meeting, welcome. My name is Subliminal and my passions are Star Citizen and content creation. Be sure to check out some of my other reviews in this series and consider subscribing. Now let's get to it. The Buccaneer is a civilian interdiction fighter sold by Drake Interplanetary. It was initially designed as an affordable option for frontier militia squadrons conscious of limited repair and maintenance opportunities. The Buccaneer is offered alongside Drake's Cutlass and Caterpillar system and has become a popular design amongst explorers and pirates. Drake Interplanetary is a human spacecraft manufacturer headquartered on Borea. The fifth largest spacecraft producer in human space, Drake was founded in 2845 by John Dredge to produce the Cutlass Medium Fighter. Their ships have a characteristically robust and geometrical design that utilizes many low-tech materials. Drake's target group includes militias and pirates. The former CEOs John and Dredge cultivated the outlaw image from the beginning of the company, which raised controversies about Drake's responsibility for pirate crimes. The Buccaneer is currently flight ready. As of today, it is not available for sale on the Pledge Store, but when it did, it sold for $110. I was able to find it for as low as $115 on the gray market, though you should shop at your own risk. It is available to purchase at Teaches and Levski for slightly over 1.4 million Alpha UEC. However, it is not available to rent. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the Drake Buccaneer. Let's take a look at the exterior. The first thing you'll notice are the massive main thrusters that propel this tiny little ship to over 1300 meters per second. The second thing you may have spotted unless you're blind is the massive ballistic cannon on top. Under each wing, there's a large laser repeater and a small but not to be forgotten ballistic repeater on the wing tips. We'll go over those in just a minute. Here's where you'll notice the very industrial look of the Drake lineup. and its stubby little wings. Let's hop inside. Here you can see just how the struts obstruct the view of the pilot. Unfortunately, the buck does not yet have the building blocks UI that some newer ships have like the Gladius. The Buccaneer has four MFDs and a radar in the middle. And in standard Drake fashion, it's lacking an ejection system. Now let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I've selected the following 10 ships. The Google Sheet document with the data is linked in the description. If this is your first time here, you may want to check the sheet or pause the screen. It explains how I've selected and compared the ships. The Buccaneer comes in under 41,000 kilograms. Coming in at 15 meters in length, it's tied in first place. It has zero SCU and ties in last place with five other ships on this list. It has a max crew size of one, but only two ships on this list have more has 583 quantum fuel units. This is tied with every ship on this list except for the Banu Defender. Its SCM speed of 210 meters per second takes third, but its max speed of 1317 is in first place. Excluding dedicated racers, this is one of the fastest ships in the game. It has a max yaw pitch rate of 65 degrees per second and ties in fifth place. And because you can't have everything, its total HP of just over 4,000 takes last place. And just when you were thinking about throwing in the tile, the default pilot DPS of almost 2,000 takes first place. None of the ships on this list have turrets, and its total missile payload of over 11,500 was saved from last place by the Mustang Alpha. Now let's talk about the firepower. 
The Buccaneer has two size one hard points on the wing tips and two size three hard points on the wings. And if that wasn't enough, it's got a fucking size four on top. <clears throat> Sorry about that. The wing tips have a pair of Yellow Jacket GT 210s. One GT 210 is size one, does 16 damage times 800 RPM for a total of 213 DPS and a 1700 meter range. With ballistics, ammo should be taken into account. It has 7,200 rounds that would deplete in 540 seconds of continuous fire. Under the wings, it has two size three CF-337 Panther laser repeaters. One Panther does 96 damage times 275 RPM for a total of 440 DPS and a 2,100 meter range. And because someone over at Drake has a Napoleon complex, on the roof, we have one Revenant Ballistic Gatling Gun. One Revenant is size four, does 31 damage, times 1,300 RPM for a total of 672 DPS and a 3,700 meter range. The Revenant has 5,000 rounds that will deplete in 231 seconds. For missiles, it has two MSD-322 missile racks with two Rattler 2s each. Rattler 2s are size two, are infrared, do over 3,500 damage, have a 1.26 second lock time, and a 4,500 meter lock range. This is a total of four missiles. I personally would like to swap out the Rattlers for Strike Force 2s because as of right now, cross section missiles don't have any countermeasures. I would also recommend swapping out the Panthers for a pair of Mantis GT 220s, as I personally don't like to mix ammo types in different fire rates. I've chosen to go fixed and ballistic with my approach with the weapons because I don't want to have to get in close. I want to get in, do the damage, and get out. Now for the components. The standard power plant on the Buccaneer is the size 1 grade 4 Hyperjet with over 3000 max power generation per second and a 13 second power uptime. I recommend to always upgrade your power plant to be the best, so I recommend the Endurance. It will raise your power generation to over 4400 per second. I would recommend the Breton, but I've been informed that it is currently bugged and will overheat. For coolers, it comes with two size 1 grade 2 endo coolers that provide 196,000 max cooling per second each and a 15 second power up time. My recommendation for the coolers is to use a split combination. The cooler with the fastest cooling rate and the cooler with the shortest power up time. This would be the Zero Rush and Ultra Flow bringing the cooling rate to 678,000 and the power up time to three seconds, taking advantages of both. For the shields, it comes with two size one grade three web shield generators with 3,600 capacity that generates 180 hit points per second. My recommendation for the shields is similar to the coolers. Apply the best regen rate for one cooler and the best capacity for the second cooler. For the Buccaneer, this would be the Palisade and the Mirage. Another honorable mention would be the FR-66. It has the best down regen delay, so you could take advantage of that trait also. I don't recommend this for this build, however, because I don't want my shields to go down. If they do, I'm as good as dead. And last but not least, the QT drive it comes with is the size one grade three Rush Quantum Drive with a 159 megameter per second quantum speed, a 5.5 second spool up, and a 12 second cooldown time. My recommendations for the QT drive is a bit more of my preference. To put it simple, I want the fastest QT drive that can make the trip from Port Alazar to Microtech, so I would pick the Voyage. However, if you aren't concerned with the range because you are willing or have the means to travel to the area in a bigger ship and retrieve your ship locally, then the Rush drive is fine. It is about as fast as the Voyage, but just can't quite make the trip to Microtech. If you don't have 170,000 Alpha UEC lying around to spend on all of this at once, I would recommend doing them in the following order. The DPS calculator over at Urkel.Games was exponentially important in my recommendations for this review. After you watch the rest of this review, check out the link in the description. It will take you to this unique loadout we have just discussed. There you can find the prices and where in the verse you can pick these items up. I would say it's pros are its speed. Its SCM speed and its max speed are pretty good. Its size of just 15 meters is going to be pretty hard to hit. Its default DPS is pretty good and if you switch to my loadout you'll get even a little bit more. As you'd expect with being such a fast and small ship, it's pretty nimble. 
The data doesn't seem to project this because of the way the individual thrusters affects maneuverability. This makes it hard to put a number on things like acceleration and deceleration, but it just feels good. Its cons are, it's HP of course. It has the worst HP pool of any fighter in Star Citizen. Its missile payload is amongst one of the worst of dedicated fighters, and I found the cockpit view to be very obstructive. So, my thoughts. The Drake Buccaneer really packs a punch with its five hard points, especially the size four on top. It almost makes it look comical. It's really fast and extremely agile. That combined with its small size is a big plus. But I can't just ignore the elephant in the room, and that's the whole HP. Its lack of sustainability in a fight just can't be ignored. The Buccaneer is very singular in its role. Get in, do a ton of damage, and get out. It could have its place in a fleet using almost guerrilla style tactics like waiting to engage enemies who are already in a fight, swooping in and surprising enemies with a huge amount of damage. But one on one, good pilot to good pilot, I think there are better ships out there for less money. However, in capable hands or the right situation, it can be deadly. Those are my thoughts. I would like to hear yours down below. I'm not sure what ship I would like to review next. If you have a suggestion, please let me know. If you've enjoyed this review, check out more of my content. If you'd like, there are tons of ways to support the channel. Number one, you can smash that like button. Number two, you can share this content with someone who may enjoy it. Number three, you can subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the circle here. Number four, you can become a channel member by clicking the join button below. And number five, if you're feeling generous, consider becoming a patron. Some perks include access to my Trello board with live updates on the progress of upcoming projects, access to scripts and comparison slides as I create them live, patronship reviews, and more. If not, just making it to the end of this video is greatly appreciated.